Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting, the Planning Commission meeting for September 6th to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, and every flag, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, Mr. Bentley, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Michael Hardy. Here. Mr. Tuckfield. Here. Mr. Marley. Here. Ms. Smith. Here. Mr. Spadafora. Here. Mr. Oliver. Here. Mr. Bentley, present. Here. All accounted for. All accounted for. Okay, next item on our agenda is approval of previous meeting minutes. You all should have received the revised meeting minutes on September 1st. So any discussion or questions about those minutes? Mr. Bentley? If there's no further discussion, I've, I reviewed them, had a few minor things, and uh, I would uh, approve. Okay. <clears throat> Motion by Mr. Bentley? And I'll report. Supported by Mr. Meyerling. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Approval of tonight's agenda. Any questions, additions, deletions before we begin? Mr. Uh, Chairman, if there's no additions or corrections, I move we approve the agenda, agenda as presented. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Seconded by Mr. Bentley. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. All right, we move on to um, old business. Mr. Box, do we have any old business for tonight? There is none this evening. Okay, moving to number seven, new business. Number seven A, site condominium subdivision, Crankwell Meadows, permanent parcel, zero eight, Two zero three zero 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 one, located on the northeast corner of Twenty Two Mile Road and Garfield, Section Twenty. Joseph Van Ash, Mr. Box, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, uh, on the road behind you, you may recall this property was here a few meetings ago for their uh, conditional rezoning. Uh, they are here this evening now with a site plan for the residential portion of their proposed development. Uh, it, it is zoned based on that conditional rezoning R1 or residential one family. And it is subject to the conditions that were approved during that. <coughs> They're listed here, uh, the 10 foot landscape buffer along Garfield, the traditional 20 foot landscape buffers and, and a few others. Uh, hopefully you all got that in, in your packet and you probably have it said recall that from when they were here just a few weeks ago. That being said, uh, their site plan that was submitted um, at this time, they, they've made all the, the needed modifications that the private road provides uh, the north-south access. They are connecting to uh, the Monarch development that would be to their east as well as out to future Garfield. They are proposing the eight-foot uh, walk as required along Garfield. Uh, and all of their lots meet the dimensional requirements as per their conditional rezoning agreement. A landscape plan was submitted. They're providing the appropriate buffers again, as per the conditional rezoning agreement. Uh, and at this time, staff is, is recommending approval as all of their items have been met. Okay, just, you know, come on up. Take your name and address, please. Joseph Van Ash, 16609 Okay, did you have anything, Mr. Van Ash, like to add? No other questions. I just want to thank everyone again, especially Jim and Josh. Okay. All right, then let's move to commissioners. Questions, comments? Mr. Bentley. I had one uh, comment regarding the detention uh, uh, ponds. Is there any intent to, uh, to place uh, any kind of barrier or fence uh, 
around the uh, engine ponds? I believe they're. I believe they're required. Are they? They exceed the six one, or are they not exceeding six one? It, we haven't determined that yet. It, it'd be something that would come up during engineering. Okay, so it's too early. Yeah, it depends on the side slopes of the detention basin. One on six, it doesn't require a fence. Anything steeper than that would require a fence. If a fence is going in, it, does there have to be any separation between the sidewalk and the the fence? No, the, the fence can go right up to the right of way line. So okay. There'll be a, a one foot buffer between the back of the sidewalk and the fence, but it would go up to the right of way line for the road. Gotcha. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Chairman Duckfield? I had a question. Uh, this might be for the petitioner. Mr. Van Ash, I, I noticed on uh, one of the drawings, I think it was uh, L2, uh, that there is a sign detail, uh, but I wasn't able to find the sign on the drawing obviously garfield's not through there yet i would assume the sign wouldn't make sense unless garfield went through is there an area that you are expecting to put that is the sign not planned can you so once it be on the west corner according future garfield Okay, I I, um, I don't see it. I certainly could be missing it. Um, oh yeah, have, call now. Is it the PR sign? Yeah, twenty foot landscape buffer. Land I see it. Heat. I just want to make sure that that uh, the sign is located. I know we have some some rules as to where we're we can put that. I know this would be a tight. Um, tight area i'm assuming we really don't need that settled until garfield was to go through anyway so it's not really i think anything to hold back anything but i wanted to make sure it was noted um thank you mr van ash and then just to follow up mr box i think we had some conversation on this i appreciate uh you forwarded back some responses to a couple of questions i had i did just want to clarify um just as a general question um with regards to uh on private roads we place the sidewalks at a three foot setback generally from the road Obviously, the size of the full parcel is similar to one of our standard residential lots. Can, can you clarify for us what setbacks kind of force that to happen? Just so I make sure I understand it. We approved them before. I'm assuming it's nothing. We're going to stop here tonight, but I've never followed it, and I've always meant to ask the question, and I haven't. Yeah, the traditional setbacks are, are based on the, the right-of-way, and since this is a private road, there is, there is no public right-of-way there so this if we use the traditional setback you'd end up with the side the sidewalk would be in the middle of their yard almost through their house so it's because you would step back from the edge of the road as opposed to the center correct correct okay. i wonder if it's something we should consider at another time i'm just trying to when i go through subdivisions and i see a private road versus a public road um it has a different feel everything else ties in together and, and feels contiguous that seems like something that maybe we should look at but obviously not something for tonight very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Box. Anyone else? Okay. At this time, we need a motion to open it to the open this up. So moved. What's the point? As we open the public hearing for uh, Tranquil Meadows. Any person wishing to speak will be recognized and will be asked to give their name and address before speaking. We ask that all speakers limit their comments to four minutes. Once the public portion is closed, we will not recognize any further discussion or comments from the community. And that goes with all the other items that we have tonight. So I don't have to read it like again, I don't think. Um, anyone like to speak on this item? We have a crowd of people and nobody has any comments. Okay. Well, then at the close. Second. Motion to close by Mr. Oliver, seconded by Mr. Bentley at 639. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Then the motion to close passes. All right. Thanks, motion on the item. No further discussion, uh, Mr. Chairman. I. Uh, Make a motion to recommend site condominium subdivision plan approval for Tranquil Meadows. That's permanent parcel 08-20-300-001 uh, for the um, 
for the recommendation of the uh, planning department and a review of the correspondence of all of our other departments. Support. I'll support. Motion by Mr. Spadafora, supported by Mr. Tuckfield. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Mr. Uh, Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Marlin. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. All right. 7B, revised PUD concept plan, Hartford Village. Thank you, Mr. Van Ash. Permanent parcel 0818100011, located on the south side of 24 Mile Road, east of Card, section 14, MJC Hartford Village LLC petitioner. Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, as you can see in the image behind you, um, and that's actually a couple of years old at this point, um, this development is largely already built. So it is a little bit unusual to have a PUD concept plan back before you um, when the development is already built. This really has largely to do with the pathway system that was on their concept plan uh, and, and their other plans as it was constructed. So what they're requesting at this time is to revise their concept plan to remove uh, the pathway and just allow for open space in that area. Uh, but again, because it's a PUD, the amended concept plan approval must be obtained by, by the planning commission. So the image on, on your left there was from 2007. You can see that pathways were originally constructed. I believe those were wood chip pathways. They were not maintained. So as you see on the image on the right, they're basically non-existent at this time. So as Hartford Village uh, moves forward and, and attempts to, to close out their site, um, we could require them to restore those pathways, but only the portions on their piece of the development which would essentially have pathways connecting to nothing because the other pieces have, have gone away and, and not been maintained at this point. So rather than have them construct pathways that lead to nothing, they have worked with uh, the other homeowners association within the development uh, and they are seeking to remove those pathways and leave them as open space. They did get uh, letters of support from all the individual homeowners associations that exist within Hartford. Uh, so again, as you see there on your left, that, that was what was approved before. It shows all the pathways. The revised drawings that have removed those pathways uh, from the plans, from their concept plans. Um, being that there's no zoning issues as a result of this, we are recommending approval at this time. Okay. Thank you. There's a petitioner here. Line up. State your name and address for us, sir. Good evening, my name is Mario Lizzie with MJC Companies. We're big thing to run your own. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Um, we have a staff that is here as well. We can help with everybody. Thank you for your time. Okay, fair enough. Commissioners, questions? Chairman, if I could. Yep. Mr. Box, do you know if the original PUD stated what material the pathways were supposed to be made out of? Off the top of my head, I do not. I, I'm assuming the fact that they were approved uh, previously and constructed with wood chips. I, I'm assuming it was stated with wood chips, but I don't know if. Mr. Rizzi, do, do you know what that was? My recollection is that originally these paths were built and constructed with wood chips, and it was done 2005, 2006 for the big recess, unfortunately. The paths were not maintained. You can see by the, by the aerial estate degraded to nothing. Um, it'd be a burden or a hardship, I think, on both property owners on both sides, including the two ways to have, have to construct these at this point. Um, I believe, maybe Mr. Van Tiflin, the new hard surface organ that came into effect, as far as thinking of having to, because now if we do a new development, through the chair to Mr. Van Tiflin, if I could ask a question. These these pathways have to be either concrete or asphalt. This wasn't an ordinance requirement. This is a re was a requirement through the PUD process. Um, they offered it, the township accepted it. So we're in a position where we have to require it unless it's removed. 
I believe that the plan called for it to be wood chips. Um, I'd have to go back and look to be 100% sure, but I, there's no way that the township would have allowed units to start being built in there if that pathway was supposed to be a hard surface like asphalt or concrete. Could have been considered part of the site work. That's right. We wouldn't have released the bond or building permits if that wasn't there. So your assumption be barring some large mistake that would not be typical of the township uh, yes. offices, that was wood chips. That's fair. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would just add that the comment that I would have is that generally when we approach PUDs, um, unlike many of the things that we deal with, usually we are giving something and we are getting something. It is it is opaquely, or not opaque, it is clearly what we're doing. In this particular case, I don't know if Mr. Izzy's company was at the beginning of the PUD or I know MJC has been building with that. I know Lombardo has been involved with it at various times. Um, there's a lot of density here. And typically the balance to density is green space and use of green space. So obviously I understand Mr. Izzy's point to the hardship of the path. I would just say that at some point in the past, the township made a decision to give extra density based on the improvements to the land. Granted that a wood chip path is probably not as much of an improvement as an asphalt path. Um, but I feel this might, um, that this goes back against some of the reasoning that this extra density was given in the first place. So I'm, I don't want to say that I'm totally opposed to uh, the request, but I think that it, it is it is contrary to the purpose of the PUD and would seem to undercut the process by removing this requirement um, decade or more after it was put in place in exchange for other um, increases in usage of the site. So that'd be another comment I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Anyone else? Mr. Bentley? Is there any, and I guess this question is to our engineering department or uh, is there any uh, uh, prohibition to putting hard surfaces, whether that be a walkway, uh, in a uh, right of way, uh, an easement, I should say, for the utilities. Uh, we've got the Edison uh, lines going through there, and I'm wondering if that was uh, a reason why they couldn't put hardscape there. It could have been a factor. Um, at the time, DTE probably had control of this. This is this is before ITC's time. Um, ITC would probably um, look at that very hard, and and they may not allow it. We haven't explored it with them. We more approached it like you know the homeowners associations don't seem to be maintaining it. They don't seem to be using it. So maybe that's the path that we go. Um, it would have to be they, MJC would have to go contact ITC and find out if that's something that they would even allow. Okay. Chairman, if I could, I, I, if, if Mr. Bentley was done, one question I did have, Josh, and, and maybe this is to Ben as well. We have multiple PUDs throughout the township. What happens if another PUD chooses not to honor some portion of the site that was part of the PUD plan? We've seen multiple plans. There's always these types of things. I think Mr. Izzy is probably familiar with, with other plans within the township that's a PUD that have site features. What happens if on other sites, the site goes in and then the feature is taken out, not maintained? Do we have any, and I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult here, but is there any ability to enforce that afterwards or does the planning commission approve based on plans and then the plans may or may not ever be kept up in the future? Well, we have enforcement rights usually through the PUD, our PUDs as drafted now, explain that we have enforcement rights. And so they're supposed to build it in accordance with the PUD and all the ordinances they're required to follow in the uh, approved site plan. So uh, that's what we would do. You could, you, could, you could take them to court civilly, the township could. Um, we also have built in our agreements now, for instance, we have a mechanism where they would come before us and explain why they haven't done it. And then we had the right to go forward with court. With court. But in, in this case, for example, the existing phases did do it. There was a path, you can clearly see the path. The path hasn't been maintained. It, it, is a PUD only holden to build the improvement and not to maintain it? They're required to build it in accordance with the PUD. And then you have a condominium association that's maintaining it in accordance with its master deed and bylaws. So. We're not in the business to maintain those things. We're not going to go in there and maintain those things. But uh, certainly, if it's if it's in maintained to the extent that it violates our ordinances, if it's a blight issue, we would enforce it through the district court. So 
Well, this this typically wouldn't be considered a blade issue, frankly. It, 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 oh. a, a lack of a path versus a path, particularly wood chips, is not sure. So we could inf we could enforce the PUD through the courts if that's what we choose to do as a township. Yep. Right. And certainly the the you know the residents or the, or the association to the extent that they have rights it with baked in within their master deed and bylaws and the associate the members of the association could also enforce that. Very good. And and to to Mr. Lyons and Mr. Fox and all the board members, I think the request itself doesn't bother me overly much here. If if the residents didn't use the path and that's why it faded out, obviously the path didn't get used. My concern here is that we constantly see PUDs. And when I vote on approving a PUD, I vote on approving a PUD because I expect that that improvement is going to be a useful improvement over the life of the property. And maybe I'm knee jerking here, but I'm, I, I don't know that I like the precedent of, of coming back and saying, oh, well, I guess we're not doing it anymore. So anyway, I, that's, that's my thoughts on it. Okay. Anyone else? I got a question. So no problem. Mr. Bach, do I understand that even if, even if this got rebuilt, it wouldn't lead nowhere? If they were, if we were to enforce MJC to build on on the Hartford Village portion that you see outlined in blue, there, it would connect. It would not connect to the trails that are supposed to be on the other side of that line because they don't exist anymore. In that instance, as Mr. Aloya alluded to, we yes, we could go to court with those other homeowners associations and enforce them to reinstate their pathways if, if the township chose to do that. But at this time, they don't exist. So it would be an action for them to build something that's going to connect nothing. And then an action by the township to, to take those other homeowners associations to court, force them to, to re reestablish those pathways if they didn't do it on their own. Thank you. And the homeowners associations are good with it too, correct? Yes, all the other homeowners association have sub submitted letters of support to remove the, the pathways. Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. At this time, I'd like to open it to the public at let's see if I can get a time here. Six fifty-two. Um, with a motion. Motion by Mr. Oliver. Second. Seconded by Mr. Spadafora. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. So, folks, if you have a question on the the Hartford Village PUD, please come up to the podium and you have four minutes. Anyone? Good evening, Stacy Surgit with FVPM, the property manager for Hartford Village, Hartford Master Community Association, Addison at Hartford and Aberdeen at Hartford, four of the five associations. Um, in your packet this evening, you found four or five letters of um, affirmation to the plan that, that you have in front of you. Um, the problem that happened over the course of time was that the paths went in in wood chips and only a quarter of the development was built and the expense of maintaining it was unsustainable for the communities. So they let it go. Um, now you have um, half of the project, which is Hartford Village, wants to complete, which I think they en ended up removing some of the units in Hartford Village, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they, they're trying to complete now, and we have no paths for them to connect to. So the communities got together and communicated with each other, and we don't want to maintain them. Um, so that's why we sub submitted letters in support of the project. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else like to speak? All right. Then we will close the public portion at, I get a time here, 6.54 with a motion. I'll motion by Mr. Bentley. Support. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. Public portion is closed. Do we have a motion on this item? Mr. 
There's no further discussion, Mr. Chair. Um, I will make the motion um, to uh, for the revised for the recommended approval of the revised TUD concept plan for Hartford Village. That's permanent parcel number 08-14-100-011. For discussion presentation from our planning department and review of correspondence from all other departments. Okay. Motion to approve the PUD concept for Hartford Village by Mr. Spadafora. Do we have a second? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Byerly. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. I will. Mm -hmm. Mr. Spadafora? Yes. Mr. Marley? Yes. Mr. Bentley? Uh, yes. Mr. Tuckfield? No. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Okay, motion passes. All right, moving on to 7C, special land use, Carmela's Banquet Hall. Permanent parcel 08-100022. Located on the southeast corner of 21 Mile Road in Garfield, Section 32, Joseph Montano, Petitioner. Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, the site is currently zoned C3 for a commercial shopping center, and the, the commercial shopping center already exists. Uh, this is a proposal for a banquet hall space facility to go into one of the that's currently vacant in this plaza uh, and that use within the C3 requires the special land use. So that being said, there's a number of categories that they must fulfill uh, for their special land use. I'm sure you're all familiar with these. We go through them each time. Uh, we do not feel that uh, the special land use for this event space uh, would create an issue in terms of the existing shopping center. It's, it's not out of the ordinary for, for these types of facilities. The proposed use needs to be of such a nature that, that it doesn't have cause issues for vehicular or pedestrian traffic. Again, the, the shopping center already exists. Uh, I don't anticipate that what they're proposing is going to cause any additional issues um, outside of anything that may exist out there already. Uh, in terms of traffic or, or pedestrian traffic. The proposed use, uh, what that is, start that later. Proposed use shall be uh, designed with respect to size, location, and intensity. Again, it's already designed, it's already built. Um, so they they provided their letter. Uh, it's, it's not anticipated that it's gonna have dust, noise, fumes, or vibration. Uh, they did put in their letter that they would prohibit uh, the use of loud music as well as smoke machines and, and little contracts. Uh, the proposed use shall be uh, of a location and height of buildings. Again, the structure already exists. Um, it, it's not changing the elevation of the building outside of a potential sign that they may put on the front. Uh, the proposed use shall relate harmoniously with the physical and economic aspects. Again, it's already a commercial development. Uh, so economically, this is the type of business that we would expect to see uh, located there. Uh, is it located and operated in such a manner that it will not affect public health and safety? Um, typically, a, a banquet facility would not uh, cause any health or safety issues I'm aware of. Um, there's a sufficient parking. There's a lot of parking in the rear of this building, especially. Um, and then lastly, that it's not detrimental, injurious to the neighborhood uh, with which it is located. Um, so. Again, being that it's a commercial facility, that's what the type of use that's already there. They have indicated in their application that they would not allow bachelor bachelorette parties. Uh, they would allow patrons to bring alcohol, but they will not be providing alcohol or food. Um, there's already a, a bar in this neighborhood. So uh, even if patrons do choose to bring alcohol, there's already alcohol located in this plaza. Um, so that being said, um, we are recommending approval, but we would like to offer that the commission consider things like uh, time limits and use limits based on their own application. Um, they specifically identified that it would be for baby showers, wedding showers. Uh, I believe they said birthday parties and corporate events. Most of those are items that would take place during normal 
business hours or, or maybe a little bit into the evening, but certainly not uh, much beyond, you know, say eight, eight or nine o'clock at night, uh, as well as limiting to those types of uses uh, as they specifically called out no bachelor bachelorette parties or uses of that nature. Is the petitioner in the audience? Yes. Come on, I'm sure and state your name in it. I'm not on the slip, but I'm a partner. But come on up. And your and your address, sir. Home address or the business? The office is fine. Uh, one six seven nine two twenty one. Okay. And your partner? Uh, Jacob Engloff. And same address. Same address. Okay. All right. Did you guys have anything you'd like to add? No. Okay. And I'll bring it to the commissioners. It's basically you're having us this hall. You're not providing any alcohol, any food. You're just running the space, correct? Mr. Bach, do you know what the occupancy is for department? I believe they, it was 120 as well. It was determined by the fire marshal. Okay. Anyone else? Um, just to follow up on that uh, question, the occupancy, I know it was noted. Uh, I hadn't seen anything in the fire marshal stuff that it is 120. Uh, can we confirm that, or uh, is that the uh, is that what your understanding is? Yes. Okay. If, if you wanted to uh, put a condition, if, if you were going to move to approve, and you wanted to put a condition based on, I can supply that later. I don't have it in front of me, but uh, if you put a condition as you know a limit based on fire marshal, I can that afterwards. I know the 120 was identified in the application uh, and uh, and I'm not sure what it was based upon as far as the overall uh, square footage of the uh, of the what is the uh, overall square footage again of the uh, I believe it's 1958. Looking for overall or the active area Mr. Bentley? Over uh, the the uh, net banquet area is thirteen sixty eight. I just square off the front area. Okay, that doesn't include off Sorry, right. so one twenty should be fine. Um, and then my second question would be, uh, um, and and the plan is not real clear, and I'm not sure what uh, are you making any modifications. Uh, Physically to the rooms, uh, adding rooms, uh, making rooms bigger. I do know that I was speaking with Mike Madonna. I think the 120 was upon a second bathroom, possibly. So that's something that might, you know, I, but I think that was after, after this. Yeah, that was my concern. There's only one bathroom. Unisex probably wouldn't be uh, appropriate for this kind of. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, even with 60 people, one bathroom is, yeah. is kind of... We don't really anticipate anything that like It's just like a max, you know, most baby showers and stuff like that. It's 40, 50 people. But we do plan on putting that. Okay, so you do plan on putting in a restroom? Yes. An, an added restroom. And um, what are your planned hours of operation right now? Um, well, right now it's Monday to Thursday, but yeah, I think it was Monday through Thursday, nine or 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. And then on the weekends, we were going to have it like starting later. Around 3 p.m. and moving to 7 till 8. Sounds fair. Okay. All right. Um, is the plan to use the rear parking? 
because uh, I'm not sure of your entrance uh, as to whether or not your plans are to make that. It can be an entrance. Both of them are going to be open. We were hoping that people actually renting the space and bringing all the items in, bring them in for the you know, infringe on the traffic. Okay. Any of these rooms uh, being used for general storage, like a, for tables and chairs that everybody would use when they rent the space? Yes, two of the existing rooms. Uh, that, that's all I have right now. Thank you. Anyone else? This is Spanifora. Yes, uh, Mr. Egloff, Mr. Montan, uh, Tano, good evening. Um, Couple of questions. Did you plan on making any exterior improvements to the facade to your space there? Okay. How about any interior renovations to the space? Yes, any more other than the bathroom. Okay. So restrooms, painting, and flooring? Yes. Like a hardwood flooring or so? Uh, in our packets, we see a lease proposal. Have you ever entered into <clears throat> and executed a lease with the landlord? Okay, and is that, uh, okay. And enough time, I take it was sufficient in there for like due diligence pending? Yes. yes what this yes. commission? Okay. I do have a question um, on your thought of or proposed rental contracts to your customers. Will you have some type of a provision like an indemnity or hold harmless if any of your patrons come in and do bring food or alcoholic beverages? Yes. Okay. And we also have insurance to cover that as well as it's a insurance policy. Okay, that's your renter's policy? Yes. No, 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 our general liability. Your general liability yes. policy for that? Yes. Okay. And the building will be covered under. That's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. I had a question. It's maybe Mr. Box or Mr. Van Tiflin. So when we build these strip malls, generally, our requirements for the door size are just the standard 36-inch door? I believe so. I, I don't know for sure. That would be more of a building question, but yeah. So in the event we put in 19, 1,900 square feet, which you got to start subtracting closets and other space, you might be down to 1,400 square feet real quick, put 120 people in. The exit, either in back or front, it seems to be a little bit small to me to stack that many people and try to get them out immediately. Because I feel these that building was not designed. That building was designed to for retail to have eight, 10, 15, 20 customers in. So the, the bathroom facility was also designed for that. The doors were designed for that. Um, I, I got some real questions on just getting people out real quick. Again, the, the 120 is off the top of my head. I don't have the fire marshal number in front of me. Um, I could be wrong, it could be less than that. Uh, but whatever, typically whatever the fire marshal occupancy is for that. Okay. So to the petitioners, you guys figure you're going to have events with 120 people? I think it'll be fair, honestly. But that was just what we had talked about when we were first going through the process of looking at the building. I don't remember who it was, but it was the office that said that push bars need to be installed on the wall. Like emergency card. and a card work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I get that. But yeah. You got to imagine what's going on in society today. If 120 people have to leave two exits quick, it's pretty dangerous. Um, so you're also being on, I'm talking to you too, being also that you're uh, only having, as I read, idle shower baby shower, graduation party, and corporate events. Could you kind of describe a corporate event that you vision happening? Like a business meeting or like an employee appreciation. Team building, yeah. Thank you for 
in if they decide to bring the alcohol in, you're going to let them. That's that's something that you're not going to police. rules or maybe that should I don't believe I'm not selling the alcohol I need a liquor license thank you I just have another question is that building sprinkled yes yes um, Mr. Chair if you're going to have um baby showers and graduation parties and, and allow them to bring in food. Do you have a kitchen area for them to clean up or? Yes, there's a place already in Vancouver that has, and then there was a fridge and a sink and a cabinet, like a, uh, in the back section of the building, a big room space. So you're going to build a somewhat of a kitchen for them? Yeah, yeah kitchen. It's you know, no stoves, microwaves, anything like that. Just outer space, a refrigerator and a sink with, storage space to lay out any food. And you supply the tables and chairs? Yes, sir. So the food comes in fully cooked, correct? Yes, sir. it's not ready. Gotcha. And you said your operations would be Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 4, and Friday and Saturday and Sunday, or Friday and Saturday? Right now, I'll just Friday and Saturday. From 3 to 7? Three day, eight. They said three to seven to eight. Yes. And quote. Well, like appointments where they're filming where they come in, you know, to see the space, you know, but actual rental time. And how do you advertise this? How would someone know that that was something that you offer? The rental space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of traditional things like nowadays, Facebook, Google, My Business, things like that. You know, internet. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, Mrs. Bassett. Anyone else? Okay. Well, then at 712, I'd like to open it to the public. For the motion? So moved. I'll support. Motion by Mr. Spadafora, supported by Mr. Meyerly. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? No. If you'd like to speak on this item, please come up to the podium and state your name and address. Anyone? Anyone? I'll oh, thank you. <laughs> but one at a time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sandy Bone, 16683 Country Ridge Lane. Um, I actually live at the retention pond behind the strip mall right there. Um, we already have the bar in there, and I really don't think we need to add anything that adds additional noise to it. Um, I would say on a regular basis, I'm woken up two to three times a night because of the motorcycles leaving the bar already. Um, so I'm worried about the hours of operation probably more than anything. And then how do you enforce those hours of operation? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. How do you enforce the hours of operation? If they have a contract from three to six, who enforces the six o'clock rule? All right, we'll, we'll answer after okay. the young lady over there speaks. We'll go to all, all your questions and concerns. My name is Fran Kane, and I live right behind at 16845 Country Ridge Court. And I am right up over the hill from the hub and from this sub. We get enough noise. We have enough traffic. The noise from that complex is horrible. We even had the hub even put trees. But you can't control the time of your of their parties, the noise level, they're not going to be there. We're going to be here listening to it. The coming out the back, using the back as parking, it's a mess. There's trailers, there's um, big uh, 
built big things that they use for storage for the hub and for the other places, there's no place to park back there. And I've seen the building. I don't understand how you can fit 125 people in this building. It used to be a beauty salon. I just can't see it. I am opposed to it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Box. Mr. Box, how does the township go about enforcing the time? So if you were to approve this with a condition of a time limit, I didn't realize there's some example, I think that they offered 8 p.m. on a Friday or Saturday. If if they were utilizing the facility beyond that and the neighbors or whoever notified the, the sheriff's office or our code enforcement, okay. they would go out there and, and give them a violation notification. Okay. Gotcha. Mr. I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't I didn't see it coming up before I went to Mr. Box. So go ahead. Give us your name and address. Uh, Pat Castle, 16877 Country Ridge Court. And um, I'm in the far bottom right corner up there. And um, as far as the sound goes, um, it's, it's like Fran said that there's a lot of noise. And with the equipment, we have a mobile home that's been parked back there and um, so many other things. And another thing of concern is if you have these parties during the week and everything, you have a, and they're gonna be loading tra uh, traffic coming in and unloading and loading things. You have a, a children's um, daycare there right on 21. And I know it's closed off, but still you're gonna have a lot of traffic where the people were picking up and dropping off their children. And as far as the uh, sound variance, um, you can't keep calling the police every time you have sound because I have that every weekend. Like I said, I live in the far uh, bottom corner there. And every Friday, it's like having a big picnic right next door to me from the hub. And I'm over 150 feet away. That's the way the sound comes. You can't keep calling the police every time this happened, I'd be calling them every weekend. So that's my concern, is the kids, the traffic, and uh, the sound. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? Good evening, I'm Nancy Johnson. 46771 High Metals. I'm directly behind the facility that they want to um, renovate. I would think it would be a big mistake. I've been living in that house for 20 years. And ever since you guys approved that bar, as everyone is stating, to expand, it's been a complete nightmare. Our afternoons are ruined. I can't spend my, my afternoons on, the, on my patio because of the noise from the bar. I can't stand in the nighttime from 10.45 every Friday night to Sunday, eat Sunday morning at two o'clock when they close. It's constant noise. Like the, like the young lady just said, you can keep calling the police for them to come out and give them a fine. They pay that $100 fine, but they're making a ton of money. I walk my dog around there every day. The parking lot, like she said, there's a camper, there's trailer where they put their storage stuff at. There's, there's vehicles that's abandoned back there. There's broken bottles, liquor bottles, used condoms. Everything is back. It's like a dump spot back there. And no disrespect, but I sure wish you would find somewhere else to go. Because if that has to happen, I was telling, Country Metals is here. We came out here because we're tired of that of that shopping center. This is it's just an atrocious. Country Metals, can you stand up, Country Metals? We're sick of it. It's to a point where I was telling one of the um, the directors, association directors, I'm ready to I'm ready to move. If I have to move out of Macomb because it's ridiculous, but we have to deal with every day this summer and every weekend. So with us, we will really appreciate if you didn't approve it. 
because it's enough traffic back and the front. The back is really bad because the bar has extend, expanded backwards and they're partying all night long, all night. So that's my piece. We appreciate if you didn't did not approve this. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Mr. Box, any comments? No. No. Then let's close the public portion at well. Sir, may I, I have one question if I can add that? Okay. Um the big question here is the hours of operations. The latest time is eight o'clock. And is there a way that they can post that in front of the um, the business so people know what the hours are? So if there is an issue and it is past eight o'clock, they can they can contact the police. Right. And I did do a drive by. I always do my drive by and, and take mm -hmm. a look. And there is some kind of trailer or camper back there. I don't know what that mm -hmm. all is all about. Is that something that with, that you guys have? No, we don't. We have nothing. We don't anticipate any of. Nothing. Exterior storage of any kind. I mean, it's a pretty simple concept, and all of our storage will be stored in tables and chairs. And you don't plan on having tables and chairs outside where people can sit. Yeah, we don't have to follow any Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let's go ahead and close the public portion now. 721 with a motion. Make a motion. Motion, Mr. Meyerling. Support. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. The public portion is closed. All right. So just everything that you do is in-house, so to speak. Okay. And there would be a, a member of your team at every one of these events. Yes. So if somebody wanted to stay later or was getting... Uh, rowdy is probably not the right word for it, but yeah. you you would deal with. It. We're also going to have a camera. All right. Okay. Any other comments from the commissioners? I guess one comment I I'm hearing from most uh, of the people that have talked in the public hearing is there's a lot of concern for noise um, and. Mm -hmm. Most of that noise is already there, generated by bar, and uh, and uh, and because of that, um, there seems to be a desire to uh, to uh, to limit anything else um, that might uh, that might operate in that area. Um, I think the uh, the the children's daycare and the traffic associated with drop-offs. I'm not sure how that correlates with the traffic for um, somebody parking in the parking lot and walking in to, um, uh, to have a, a party um, and uh, or meetings or what have you. Uh, I'm not sure, um, I don't know if you can speak to that, um, Mr. Box, Box but, uh, Traffic, the noise is the only thing that I really understand as being a problem, and that is primarily the cause of the bar. And uh, we're being asked to uh, uh, to not approve um, uh, under that consideration because the bar's so noisy. Um, and I don't know. If, I don't know if there's any. Uh, solution to that that we as the commission can uh, can uh, provide so that's just my my point of view and the hub has moved outside too i believe right in the back they do have an outdoor they have an outdoor area okay and you would have no outdoor area okay is right. on a follow-up to that if there is outdoor and that was approved um is there any is there any restrictions on that, that if it does get too noisy or whatever, that it can be shut down? Yes, there are. Mr. Box, I think that's under our, that was under the COVID uh, extension, correct? Correct. And then we turned it into the, the more uh, permanent, yet seasonal operational outdoor business or outdoor business operations. Uh, and, and there are restrictions on time. I don't, again, I don't know off the top of my head, but I want to say it's, it's 10 or, or 11 p.m., something like that, that those outdoor 
noises need to cease. So I, I know it sounds like they've called the police often um, outside of notifying the authorities. I, I don't know what else they can do at this point. I'm curious on that, but I think that I, I'd have some more questions for that, but maybe we'll leave that for, for later comments on another one, but I'm, I'm curious on it. All right, well, the public portion is closed and we have this item up for a uh, motion. Anybody wanting to make the motion? Chairman, if there's no further discussion, I'd make a motion to approve the special land use for Carmelo's Banquet Hall, permit parcel 08321002022, located on the southeast corner of 21 Mile Road. Uh, this is uh, pursuant to the fact that the petitioner has met all of our standards as applied, um, and that uh, it's incumbent upon us to follow our procedures when it comes to approving these special land uses. Okay. But should we include the time? And yes, thank you very much. There is actually, there's a couple things I should probably include, and we can put this in discussion if anybody disagrees with it, but specifically that the petitioner has volunteered that their hours would be maintained between 10 and 4 p.m., 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., Monday through Thursday, 3 and 8 p.m., Friday through Saturday. And they are stating at this time, no business on Sunday, um, that their use would be limited to um, bridal showers, baby showers, graduation parties, birthday parties, and corporate events. I believe that was everything that they had. Um, and the one last one that I would stipulate, um, certainly we can discuss it, uh, would be that a member of their staff would be on site during all events and that they would not be uh, unsupervised. This question on that, what about indoor use only? Uh, yes. I, I wouldn't be fine including that in the motion. Mm -hmm. And addition of planet hardware on both exterior doors, as well as an additional toilet facility. I guess if, if Mr. Uh, um, um, Bentley would be um, okay with that, I would just say, assuming it passed all building um, safety requirements. We may miss. There may be additional things past that that we're not thinking of. Right? And I, well, that's something they, they intend on doing. Yeah. Me personally, I would be hesitant to add that specifically to the motion. Okay. Point of clarity question on the motion also. Um, Mr. Tuckfield, um, you mentioned the uses that were presented uh, in parentheses, baby showers, wedding showers, and then there's the proverbial, et cetera. We talked about some other things with that. Uh, are, are you limiting to, was it your intent on the motion for just those uses? Or perhaps uh, do we open it up for some more what seems compatible uses. I was thinking of maybe birthday parties, uh, children's birthday parties. And then if you're gonna go with an office uh, uh, party uh, around the holidays, I can see during the week you have, uh, I don't know, office Christmas parties where potentially liquor can come in. I guess I just needed more clarification on the, so the, the uses. I, I was trying to write down what the petitioners had stipulated that they would be doing. I'd be certainly open to further clarification. I think I'd noted bridal, birthday, graduation, baby, and corporate events, which I think covered everything. And I would ask the petitioners, was there anything there that you would anticipate that I was missing? Uh, the only thing I'd like to ask, um, would you guys reject the request of just having it be very transparent hour-wise and just doing it, you know, seven days a week, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., that there's no, you know, it's very transparent, just every single day, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Because this is something new, so if we find out that, you know, obviously it's not going to be till 2 a.m., like, that's not even an option. But, you know, if it's, if the times change and we set up now, are we going to come in and get pre approved different, you know, times? So that's why we were saying like 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., which I think is practical. And again, there's no outside, there's no, we're prohibiting loudspeakers, loud noise. So as far as that stuff, that's not going to be. And that is going to be solved on a parental contract. That's so I guess, again, point, Mr. Chair, point of further clarification on the question, the motion on the floor to you gentlemen, will someone be there at all times, seven days a week throughout the entire hours of 10 a.m. until 8 p.m.? Or is it just open 
uh, by appointment only within those confined hours. Yes, it is by appointment. Appointment only and someone will be there. Very yes. Quick. Okay. Right. But not we be a long deadline. And I make sure it's clean. But no activity before 10 a.m. and no activity uh, after 8 p.m. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'd be acceptable of modifying that motion. It's possible that I might need to withdraw the motion and restate it to make sure that we're all on the same I, page. I wish you would. Yeah. Um, uh, so at the risk of going too long, I would then retract the previous motion and make a new motion to approve the special land use before I make the motion. Is there any other discussion now that I've laid all my stipulations on the floor? Anything else that I'm missing? Right. Before I speak another paragraph here? No. Okay. Speak away. All right. Then I make a motion to approve the special land use for Carmelo's Banquet Hall permanent parcel 0832232100022. This would be based upon its meeting with our process for approving the special land use and pursuant to several restrictions. The restrictions would be that hours would be maintained Monday through uh, set, uh, Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. That uses would be restricted to bridal, baby, bridal and baby showers, graduation parties, birthday parties, and corporate events. And that staff would be on site at all times if there was any events and that uh, any appointments to uh, view the hall would be made during business hours. I'll second that. Motion by Mr. Tuckfield, seconded by me. Uh, Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Marley. No. Mr. S Mr. Spadafore. Yes. Mr. Oliver. No. Mr. Bentley. Yes. All right. Motion passes. Five to two. Okay. Thank you. What's up? What's up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item on our agenda, 7D. Site condominium subdivision plan, Wolverine Country Club Estates. Wait just a moment. I like that all the folks are out. Okay, side condominium, Wolverine Country Club Estates, permanent parcel 08053010009, located on the south side of 26 Mile Road, east of Romeo Plank, Section 5, Lombardo Homes Petitioner. Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Um, so the property in question this evening uh, has been before you previously. It was actually the preliminary plan was approved in November of 2020. Um, they then began their process to go through engineering. Um, there's there's a few minor changes that have been made at that time. Um, in addition, typically they would then come back in with their uh, final plan approval. Uh, as you may recall, about a year ago, we started a a new process for the site condo subdivision plan. Um, they are actually transitioning from the preliminary plan into the site condo subdivision plan. Um, for all practical purposes, it doesn't really change anything. Um, it, it's just a different process that we've established uh, as a township for how they get approved. Uh, that being said, uh, outside of the few minor changes I'm gonna go through here in a minute, um, most everything, again, you've already seen in November of 2020, um, with the exception of the landscape plan, which was not part of a preliminary plan. So um, that being said, um, the plan looks very similar. The detention basin has been revised. Mr. Van Tiflin mentioned earlier that, that those type of things happen 
you know, they, they may or may not require a fence based on the, the slope. So the, the shape and size of their detention basin has changed slightly. Uh, the road name. that were approved previously were actually approved erroneously because they were road names they were proposing of what would be phase one, phase two, uh, and so on. Um, outside of that, uh, the only thing you guys have not seen previously would be the landscape plan. The full pack, full landscape plan was in your packet. Uh, hopefully you had a, a chance to look it over. They are proposing uh, all of the, the necessary uh, landscape buffer, in terms of dimension, as well as uh, some of the vegetation that they're going to plant, uh, and at this time, staff has no uh, concerns, and we are recommending approval. Okay. If you're in the audience, I don't believe so. No, no, not yet, not yet. Just here. But I'm Wolverine. No. Is that a requirement that they be present? I don't know. Is that a requirement that they be present tonight, Mr. Box? It is not a requirement. It's a recommendation. Recommendation. Okay. All right. And we'll open it to commissioners. Um, I had mm -hmm. one concern that I think I raised uh, previously, but do um, uh, you have the whole development? Um, yeah. Everything seems to dump onto uh, Romeo Plank here uh, to the north here and uh, and then into the sub. Uh, so my my concerns were, were traffic, uh, especially with just one. Um, one entrance and access, uh, otherwise you're going through an existing and then uh, where what the intent was for construction since they're not here. Uh, uh, I suspect then uh, all of these roads that are newly built will be used for construction in the later phases, um, or they're going through existing, uh, and that's concern. So that was those were my two initial concerns, and can't get them responded to. So again. Mm -hmm. Touch a little bit on that your concerns with access. So you're correct. This uh, Wolverine Country Club Estates Two uh, does exit onto Romeo Plank. Uh, however, if you look at how it uh, abuts the existing development, it will also have access off of 25 Mile Road and actually Luckman Road as well. Um, so overall, it has three connection points. Am I missing one? Is there a fourth one? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because there's, there's multiple on 25 mile. And there's two here two on Luckman. and two on Luckman. So overall, the, the Wolverine neighborhoods as a conglomerate will have multiple ways in and out. Um, and, and traffic from the new neighborhood, yes, they may go through the existing neighborhood, just like the existing neighborhood may want to go to Kroger at 26 and Romeo Plank, and they can go through the, the new neighborhood. So they're, they're public roads and, and they will have access to 25 mile and Luckman, not just Romeo Plank. Do you know if there has been any uh, traffic study done on that? I do not. They've went to the Department of Roads yet? I'm sure they've worked with the Department of Roads to establish their, their driveway locations, okay. road locations, but I do not believe a traffic study Okay. Required or has been completed. Okay. So if they work with the Department of Road, that was probably part of the Department of Road's consideration to allow it. Then. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Oh, there was a concern I had, uh, and I think I brought it up before, is the access roads that uh, stop at the easement um, and wondered if in a couple of places they would be reconnected or they would be connected. Um, is that the intent in the future? That That is the intent in the future. So as you see on this aerial, there, there's one 
uh, on the north side that kind of stubs and right. into this and there's one actually a little bit further east of here as well um this that's not their property we can't require them to to connect those roads on property they don't own uh, those connections are something the township will likely have to do at a later date oh i see the township would have to do that through an easement correct we cannot require the development to make the connection because they don't own that property. I see. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Well, then I need a motion to open it, open this item. We'll bring Country Club Estates 2 to the public. Make that motion. Motion by Mrs. Smith. Seconded by Mr. Oliver. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay, so at 7.41, we're opening it to the public. And ma'am, now is your time. Come on up. <laughs> My name is Janet Krautner, and I currently live in Country Club of the North. Um, my property backs up to both the easement and what used to be the golf course. Um, my concern is I know that there's a pond on what used to be the golf course. They're going to fill that all in according to, you know, their design. Um, I know there's been people there marking the property for, um, you know, um, conservative things to keep. I know at the bottom of, on, on, the, on my property, there is an underground, um, uh, like, like a river or something, and in the spring, it's filled with water. Are they gonna just fill all of that in? That's not on there. So those are my concerns. Plus all the noise, <laughs> all the dirt that's gonna happen now. I mean, it's been like this, been there 20 years and it's been empty since then. So that's my concern. I'm really concerned about the pond that's back there because it's really nice. and. You know, I hope they don't fill it in, but it looks like they're going to. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Anyone? Okay. And then we will take a motion to close the public portion at 742. So Mr. Oliver made the motion. I'll support Seconded it. by Mr. Bentley, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Public portion is closed, and we have an item with a motion on the floor. Anybody want to make that motion? Oh, before we do that, Mr. Box, did they say anything about that pond? Um, I'm not sure exactly which pond she's speaking of. I, if you can see my cursor, is it maybe this this one here? Um, and, and yes, it does appear that that it will be filled in. I think you can actually see the the contours here of where the existing pond is. I'm sure. I don't know. Mr. Van Tiflin wants to weigh in on that. I'm sure that's something that was looked at in the engineering uh, process. Okay. I don't. I don't think the engineering department here at the township or you know the drain commission or anybody would allow that to be filled in if it wasn't uh, acceptable to their standards okay and where will that water go into the detention basin that it's in the purple ah. up on the screen so all of the site drainage will go into that pond and then will be slowly discharged into the river okay thank you all right anyone else do we have a motion If there's no further discussion, um, Mr. Chair, and I uh, will move to uh, recommend site condominium subdivision uh, plan or approval that for Wolverine Country Club Estates uh, number two, permanent parcel 0805-301-009, pursuant to the um, recommendations of our planning department and all the other department uh, reviews on this matter. Okay. Motion by Mr. Smith. Support. Supported by Mr. Smith. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. I will. Thank you. Mr. Spadafore. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Oliver. 
Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. Yes. Okay. Motion passed. Thank you. All right. Next item. Site condominium subdivision plan. Your pro. Permanent parcel 0814300015 located on the north side of 23 Mile Road between Card Road and North Avenue, Section 14, 23 Mile Acquisition, LLC Petitioner. <laughs> Mr. Vox. Mr. Chairman and Commission, uh, this site, as you mentioned, is located north on the north side of 23 Mile, um, just east of Card Road. Uh, there is a PUD for this site uh, that was approved previously. Uh, so it is a single family development. This phase is there. There will be another phase uh, for this PUD, but this is the single family development phase. Um, you can see here they, they are uh, proposing the eight foot walk along 23 mile, five foot side. All of their lot dimensions meet our requirements. Uh, and there is two points of access along 23 mile, also being stubbed to the west. Uh, and to the north for future development connections. Um, they do have their necessary dedicated landscape areas along 23 Mile Road, um, and they, they do have their site entry sign features in their uh, packet, in your packet, and at this time, staff is recommending approval uh, for this item. Okay. Is your in the audience? Come on up, sir. Your name and address for us. My name is Doug Kennedy. I'm a mediator. Company address is fine, sir. 1849 Todd Run. Okay. Did you have anything you'd like to add tonight? I went to lay it out. Exactly. And the last site we had development. Commissioners, what should you guys? Anything else? Um, Go ahead, Mr. When do you think you'll start this project? Let's get it moving right now. This fall? Yeah. For the record, um, you probably don't even know this, but see in the corner that green area, all the trees? See it there? Wait, right there. I don't know. Go the other way. Down. There you go, right there. There's probably, which don't mean nothing. I mean, I just want to bring that your attention. There's probably one of the prettiest silos, a farm silo in the county, still standing there, and the trees are wrapped around it. Didn't know that. I didn't think you did. Hmm. Yeah, I was hoping that maybe you could work around that, but I could clearly see. It's going down. It is kind of a shame, but it's not going to affect my vote. So don't worry about it <laughs> because uh, I understand that's progress, but uh, just point of interest. Okay. Interest. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone? All right. At this time, let's um, open Deerbrook to the public with a motion. At seven forty nine, I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. Meyerly, seconded by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. So if anybody would like to come up and speak on the site condominium plan for Deerwood, now is your time. Anyone? 
Ready. And I guess we can go ahead and close the public portion at 750 with a motion. I'll make that motion. Motion and by Mr. Smith. Huh? And I'll support. Boarded by Mr. Meyerly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right, we have a motion for the item. Here, what? Chairman, I just want to double check with Mr. Box. Mr. Box, you may have said this, and my apologies, but Melissa has a note on here to make sure that the plant list is updated. It, you actually yeah, submit verify that was he, he submitted that this afternoon and it, very good and you may have said that my apologies did not okay I apologize uh if that's the case mr chairman then i would make a motion on this item uh, that would be for the approval of the recommendation i believe of the approval of the site condominium plan uh, for deerbrook permanent parcel 0814300015 uh, based upon the pet fact that it seems to meet all of the appropriate requirements the department heads have given their recommendation second motion by mr tuckfield seconded by mr spadafora mr bentley please call the roll i will thank you so much mr tuckfield yes mr spadafora yes <clears throat> Mr. Hardy? Yes. Mr. Oliver? Yes. Mr. Marley? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Mr. Bentley? Yes. Okay. Working passes. All right, on to item F. Site condominium, subdivision plan, the corners at Cary Glen. Permanent parcel 08 214 Zero eight two two one zero 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 one seven, located on the south side of Twenty Three Mile Road, east and west of Hydric Road, section twenty one and twenty two, Alti Homes of Michigan LLC petitioner. Before we go to Mr. Box, Mr. Spadafora, is this the item? This is not the item. No, next one. Oh, it's the next one. Oh, I don't know what I did. Okay, then Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, much like the last two items, they did have a preliminary plan that was approved uh, by this commission. They've gone through uh, some engineering work. Uh, they're now choosing to kind of change paths into our new process, which is the site condo subdivision plan. So again, their preliminary plan uh, had previously been approved. That is largely unchanged. What you haven't seen is, is largely the, the landscape plan from this development. Uh, so they're proposing single family development. They've zoned it to uh, R1 as needed. Um, they have connections out to Heidenreich on both sides. Um, on the west side of Heidenreich, they also connect south on Crusader Drive. And on the east side of Heidenreich, they connect south and to the east to the neighboring communities. Uh, all of their, their lots meet our dimensional standards. They're providing the sidewalks along Heidenreich, as well as the, their internal streets. Um, yeah, their uh, landscape area dedicated along 23 Mile Road, uh, and they do have their site entry signs uh, on the east and west side of Kilburn Drive. Uh, their landscape plan, which again was included in your packet, indicates all of the different uh, plantings that they will do, as well as uh, full dimensions uh, of their site entry sign. And at this time, staff is recommending approval of this development. Okay. You're already there. Good evening. All right. Name and address, please. My name is Mike Knowles, N O L E S. Address is 49287 West Road in Wixom. I am with the Umlor Group and representing Pulte Homes of Michigan this evening. We also have Kirk Thomas with uh, Pulte Homes as well. Um, we're pleased to be back in front of you again. Uh, we were in front of you last November, and as you've seen for a couple of the actions in, in front of us, we're grateful for your new process. Um, we've seen a couple of developments sort of jump to the new process, and I think that was the goal of the new process. Uh, the old process required sort of a four-stop um, process where you go to the planning commission and the board, 
do your final engineering and permits, and then back to planning commission and the board. And the idea behind the process would expedite and improve the board in a more uh, streamlined manner so that we do come to an approval for you the site plan as, well, as Mr. Bach mentioned the exact same place that I about previously. But for, uh, we have added uh, the landscaping plan uh, and for a couple of items that were added through engineering. But now we're able to perfect the permits um, and then go right to pre-construction. You asked the prior um, applicant for Deerbrook um, what their intent is. Our intent uh, as developers and engineers are all the same as we've done during the late into September. And that is to try to get over to find it through as quickly as we possibly can so that there's some chance of us getting the roads in the season. And we don't know we're different. Um, and so we are grateful for the new process. Um, normally, in this process, final engineering comes after um, the economy and site plan approval. Um, we are substantially complete with final engineering, not 100% complete. Uh, we can just turn it in our fourth. Division of Final Engineering, uh, Mr. Van Cook from the group on Friday. Um, we do already have our Eagle uh, 41 sanitary permit or Eagle uh, in any kind of water permit is in place. Um, we've been working with the Palm County DPW on the Vander train that you can see on bifurcate the property. Um, we both uh, review the dedication documents for that drain and the cross section uh, improvements on that drain. We also um, received uh, last week um, the final draft of a phasing agreement. You can see it's being built in, in two phases. Phase is the phase of what actually is under one acre, which is going first, and the phase of the lease has been developed under one acre, going second. So there's a drain and we're going to have to We've also worked with the Department of Roads. Um, you can see we didn't have any issues out. Department of Roads, and they are doing improvements on it. So we have to coordinate with all of their improvements that are planned for that area, as well as the pump station uh, and improvements. Uh, there's a couple of pump stations in the area, one of the temporary. So we had to coordinate our engineering uh, through those various parts. So we're significantly further ahead um, and we normally would be at this um, juncture in the process. Uh, um, and again, we're grateful for the town to have the foresight to modify and streamline their development processes so that it, it makes sense um, and allows us to be able to develop urban development. So uh, that being said, I uh, welcome any questions that you might have, and uh, we'll get to the next Okay, hey, thank you, commissioners. Well, one concern I have, um, and, and it may not have, it may affect really Department of Roads, um, but wondered if you had any discussions with them. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of cars going to be dumping down onto uh, Heinrich uh, from both sides uh, when complete. Heinrich is still fairly narrow, and uh, it seems like seems to me a, to be a bottleneck. Um, and uh, wondered if there were any discussions that uh, um, that the that Heinrich would be um, increased and change a little bit of the, the profiles here um, to allow people to turn um, and, uh, and on the other side, since it looks like just the two. On the last one, you say the greater planning network. It's similar here, too. So there are three cell streets, which is a three mile road. So
with natural color. Point of One issue that the department was very clear about was they, they didn't want to know. Right. Indeed, because it will happen. So we want to do the extreme color color network, um, but we were trying to get to one of those. So this is why we not uh, right. Okay. Uh, my second question was more related to the uh, the bioretention. Uh, um, Ponds and and any uh, requirements for fencing around the uh, detention ponds, uh, the three different detention ponds you have as well. So the bio retention well, they're not very they're not very steep, and I apologize, I don't know off the top of my head if our slopes uh, were steeper than the six on one that requires the, the fencing. I'm sorry, I don't know off the top of my head, um, but we have been through the engineering. Box right up, um, I don't think I heard whether or not you have fencing or anything around the, the, the detention ponds. That's right. No, I don't. Okay. And then the bio, the bio detention ponds, are, are they for a particular reason? You don't have a lot of room off of of large uh, parking lots and that i'm just wondering no they're too small areas and it seems that uh, all the counties have sort of gone i'm sorry i don't know if you have an opportunity right idea of greater management of storm water so you have to go out and do soil tests and find out if you have a area thing Thank you. Okay. Chairman, I did have a question for the petitioner. Um, indicates there's a name change on the property. Doesn't really affect the requirements, but I'm curious what prompted the change. Well, you know, it's funny because I have named more site closed in my three years of doing this type of work um, than probably anyone in the room. Um, but I don't know how to get it right. In this particular one, uh, both of them. Had, uh, has similar development uh, and farms. The one that was ordered with a name point, they have that name Smith. So the land sellers um, names were now for slice of them, which then went to a book that is planned on it. And uh, it's like one of the main reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? All right. Do we need a motion to open it to the public, this item, Cherry Glen at 804? So, motion by. I'll make that motion. Mrs. Smith, seconded by Mr. Oliver. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. So, folks, if you have a question about Cherry Glenn, now's your time to come up to the podium. Give us your name and address. 
and we will answer all of your questions at the end. So just so you know that Eskom knows your concerns and that Mr. Box will and Mr. Van Tiffel will address it at the end. Go ahead, sir. Hello, my name is Joseph Brock. I live at um, 20539 St. Martin's Avenue, uh, just below the lower left um, detention basin there. Um, so I've seen this plan before. It actually looks like a pretty nice plan. Um, I did have some questions uh, regarding the detention basin specific to the fence. So it's unfortunate you didn't know if they had a fence uh, still because um, when we saw an earlier version, the fence was right up on the line and there are already fences on those properties there on some of them. Um, so we were asking if they could put a kind of a standoff of a couple of feet just so we can get back on the other side of them and mow. And then the second question we had was who, who maintains the detention basins um, after they're put in? Um, as far as our, you know, are they going to be uh, de-weeded or mowed or I don't, I'm not sure what the plan was, if it was going to be grass or rocks or how that was going to go. Um, I think the only other thing, the only other questions we had really dealt with traffic and I think most of them have been addressed by the, by the plan. Um, just one last uh, point for the, for the board. Um, so with the change in the process uh, in earlier meetings, brought up a couple questions. Usually it was pointed to like another meeting that we should come to and bring those things forward um, with the change in the process and I guess less touch points, um, really the public didn't, we knew that. So there might not be as many um, of the appropriate engagements under the old process as there are under the new process to, to come and bring up concerns. So that's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening. I'm Karen Kruska, 505 Knightsbridge Drive. Um, I'm in Buckingham Village One, so I'll be at uh, phase one over there. Um, I am the HOA secretary. Um, I had contacted several of my neighbors and asking, did you see this letter? Because I literally just opened my mail yesterday that came in on Friday and Saturday, and nobody else had received the letter either. I, I, I sent pictures, texted it out to everybody, but they were not aware of this. Um, I did notice that the letter was generated on August 3rd. So it means it probably came in in either Friday or Saturday's mail because it probably was mailed out on the 31st. Um, I didn't think there was enough time um, that for our neighbors to get this letter so that they could be here, especially over the weekend and school having just started. Um, so I just wanted to make that point. I think we need in the future to have a little bit more time in regards to having this up so that people are aware of what's going on. Um, my big concern is um, the traffic. Um, I know eventually Heidenreck is going to be put through. They're working on the um, you know, right of way right now. Uh, I've talked with Jim Van Tiflin before, um, but how are we getting out? Right now, it's almost an impossibility on certain times of the day, which it was for me to get here today, to make that turn to head west out onto 23 mile. Now we're gonna be adding more traffic um, out there. Um, get, granted, the road's gonna be under construction. Is there any plans, does anybody know, for a traffic light to go there even before the road is put all the way through back to 22 mile? And that is it, thanks. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Chairman. If I could ask for a clarification from the from the resident. Um, Ma'am, could you come back up for just a moment? Sorry, just a clarification. With regards to a road and a potential stoplight, are you referring to 23 mile or are you referring to Heidenreich? To uh, Heidenreich at 23 mile, a traffic light there. Okay, very good. Um, because the traffic is it's just horrible trying to get back out into 23 mile, and it's going to be worse <laughs> with more traffic in that too. Good. Thank you. Very Thank you. Good. Hello, I'm Rebecca Boyd, and I live at 50639 Cheltenham. So I live just south of the big retention pond that is east of Heinrich. Um, I just had a few questions as far as, I know he mentioned um, drain improvements. Um, I would like some clarification on that because that drain actually, we have a huge easement on our property 
because of the drain. And we're just curious on how it's going to affect our property. Um, I was also curious about the fence around that just because we're so close and we have young kids and animals. And so I don't know the, the dangers. It looks rather large. Um, and I'm sure you guys have stuff in place to maintain that safety. Um, and then just to kind of reiterate what she was saying, that turn off, like coming off Heidenrich onto 23, either way, uh, is very, it, it's, there's a lot of people there all the time. Um, and I know 23 is expanding and I wasn't sure that I totally understood. I know he said there's deceleration and acceleration lanes. Um, and I wasn't sure if he was talking about on Heidenrich or on 23 mile road, the ones on 23 mile road are already there. Um, which are again, going to be expanded when they do the modifications to 23, but I'm not quite understanding. Cause like you had mentioned, it is just a two lane road. There's not even like lines on it. There's no posted, um, speed limits. People fly. I call the police several times <laughs> because they drag race because it's, you know, just a short road. Um, so, you know, questions about that. Uh, yeah, I think that's all of my concerns. Thank you. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone? Okay. At this time, we'll go ahead and close the public portion at 811 with a motion. So moved. Motion by Mr. Spadafore, seconded by Mr. Oliver. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. Commissioners, we have an item on the floor. Mr. Chairman, is it possible to get any comments from Mr. Box on the? Yes, Mr. Box. Sure. Um, a couple of things I will touch on. So uh, the question about the XL and D-cell lanes, that would be here on Heidenrich. You can kind of see the lines on the screen behind you um, where there are XL, D-cell lanes. Uh, that's what the, the gentleman, the petitioner was talking about. And, and she is correct that the XL and D-cell lanes on 23 already exist. Uh, with regards to a traffic light there, so they're, they're not our roads. They belong to the county road department. Um, my guess is that at some point in the future, a traffic light will go there, whether this development spurs it or, you know, another one, if there's another one down the road somewhere, I'm, I'm guessing that at some point a traffic light would probably go there, just like it is at all the other mile roads uh, in the township, um, whether or not, again, it's now or at some point in the future. Uh, but again, they're not, they're not our roads. Um, the basin fence, um, I, I don't see on these plans whether it's identified if there is one or not. I, I can't necessarily answer that question, uh, but it's based on the slope of the pond. If it's above a certain slope, if it's too steep, then the, the fence is required. Um, and as far as the, the fence being on the property line, so we require fences to be on the property line or at least three and a half feet off the property line so that somebody can get behind them with a mower and maintain them. Um, so if, if one is required, for example, on this detention basin and a homeowner already has a fence there, um, they will either have to work out something with the homeowner uh, to figure out which fence is gonna maintain, or they can pull the, the fence off uh, the property line. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Box. Motion? Anyone? In, uh, in response, I guess, to that last statement regarding the fence, is that something um, that would be worked out later on during engineering? Is that something that we need to put a stipulation in? Um, it's usually something that, that the developer would work out with the property owner if the if they want the fence to be on the property line if they can't work that out then they would have to come back to us with a, an amended plan that shows the fence off the property line we've seen it go both ways okay so interested uh um, residents should be contacting who this uh the township to 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 set up something that would uh 
that would do that? Or do they contact the developer? Who, who do they contact? At this point, the onus would be on the developer. So the developer would have to make contact with the residents if they have questions and contact the developer. We don't have the engineering done yet. Um, it's close, but it's still bouncing around between the design engineer and our engineering consultant. So as soon as we have the plans available to us, we can certainly share them with the public. So is that something you can... Um... Yes, um, what we've done is we have a very good staff at the end of the development, and there's uh, Paul Schick running the department, he's the current person. Closer to finalizing the project, they certainly can reach out to Mr. Brock. Um, wow. Um, and at the time, Okay, and the, the one question that was uh, brought up um, regarding the um, the drain that uh, is has a, a right of way or an easement on some of the residential properties. Will there be, will that be affected in any way? Yeah, so. Um, the profiles or what have you. The drain easement, um, that, that's a great point. The drain easement is an easy one, and it's not on any of the residential properties. So you can see it from each spot right in the middle of the left and the up second, the last one the That's an 80 foot swap of the drain easement, and that will be graded entirely to the home. As one of the final items that we have with them, I'm sure that we have a section. Yes, it will be graded. Eighty foot easement is the standard. So more capacity there than um, I should say. So uh, I think increasing the drain cross section increases the volume, but it's not really going to. Um, and I guess the primary question is at the property line, um, at the property line, it will be the same profile that it currently is? Yes, sir. It will have to have a transition because we're, we're not going to be creating off sites for the transition. Well, the interesting thing about this today is that the crop is height, right? Great. And, and there's a little, a little curve of it. You can see that green space in the second to the on the east side of the as well. Um, and that's what the, um, the Department of Labor is doing right now is to make sure that we have those cross sections and those transitions. Um, right. that are kind of great. So is it fair to uh, indicate to the, the concerned um, citizen that uh, it should not affect the, uh, it shouldn't increase the drainage uh, uh, into their, uh, adjacent to their property then? Yes, it should. Yes, Remain the same. Combination of the stormwater systems and the volume of detention bays that will be increasing the cross section of the drain itself. That is a very clear statement. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and then maintenance, I think, was another question brought up by uh, of the detention basins. Maintenance is the responsibility of the homeowners association. So, um, as part of our process, we submit a master deed and bylaws as well as the exhibit fees, establishing the site condominium, and those rules and regulations are uh, laid out. We responsibility to maintain the spaces, the landscaping, the parking, the 
as well as the dispatcher based on enforcement mechanisms. And then your um, attorney will be reviewing um, that who's already uh, seen some of the uh, documentation, if not even certainly as well. So, yes, um, HOA is the ultimate responsible party. Multi homes is showing the HOA is in be responding to the transmission plan. Um, I think that's all I had. Um, I think that's all I had. All right. Do we have a motion? Uh -oh. Entertaining a motion. Entertaining a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the site condominium subdivision for the corners at Cherry Glen from the parcel 0821200014 and 0822100017. Motion back of that by Mr. Oliver, seconded by Mr. Spadafora. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. I will. Thank you. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mr. Spadafora. Yes. Mr. Marley. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Okay. All right, motion passes. Thank you, sir. All right, item G. Revised site plan, elite corporate park. Permanent parcel 08201001018, located on the south side of 23 Mile Road, west of Romeo Plank, section 20, elite corporate park, LLC petitioner. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Spadafora. under Article 7 of the Macomb Township Planning Commission bylaws and rules of procedure, and in order to avoid any appearance of impropriety, I'm declaring a conflict of interest that I have with agenda, agenda item 7G, as I am an authorized representative of the petitioner and the legal owner of the property on which this application is based on, and therefore I have a business or financial interest in this agenda item request. Therefore, I'm abstaining from any discussion or votes relative to this agenda item request and will leave the room at this time in accordance with our bylaws and rules of procedure. Please call me back after you vote on this item. Okay. Thank you. Do we need to make a motion to exclude him from voting? Mr. Spadafora? That would be wise, yes. Okay. I'll make that motion. And made by Mrs. Smith. Supported by Mr. Oliver, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right, Mr. Box. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commission. Uh, this uh, site before you uh, should look familiar. You've seen it before. Um, it, this is the corporate park. Uh, it's been in front of you, I think, a few times, actually. Um, so they have... Uh, a number of units within the site. I guess you can see here on, on this uh, drawing of the site plan. So um, units one and two would front up on 23 mile road, unit three behind it, four or five, and then the larger units in the back of six and seven. Um, so in this situation, they are seeking a revised site plan. Uh, really the only thing that's changing is the fence that they're proposing to use around the detention basin. Uh, they, they do have a fence requirement, as we've talked about in some of the previous items, the, the slope meets the requirement um, to have the fence there. Um, and the, the requirements are that the fence be constructed of aluminum. Uh, however, the uh, engineer... ...do state that fences in areas of low public... This evening is your approval to change the fence from the typical aluminum uh, to the vinyl coated chain link fence. 
uh, that is uh, an option based on the engineering standards. Uh, there's no zoning related issues or concerns. Um, so as long as the planning commission sees that it's not obstructive or obtrusive uh, to the nearby residences, uh, which I think are several hundred feet away, um, then we, we would have no objections. Yes, you're in the audience. Good evening. My name is Dominic Garrett with the Lee Corporate Park. My address is 51410 Long Drive, Macomb, 48042. And I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. I can explain what I'm um, okay. Let me open it up to the commissioners. Anyone? But the only thing we're changing here is offense. Right, we are modifying fences in the middle of the industrial park because we will survive. So we indicate we're about 500 feet away from any residents. Uh, we proceed to modify the fence from a decorative fence to chain link, same color, color coded, same. Quantity of the fence to get it installed and it's a place to finish. It's one of the past aspects of the project we've been getting finished. And that's why we're at Thank you. Anyone else? One of the documents I, I read indicated about 200 feet was residences. Uh, the frame alone is 150 feet. Scale to the closest residents. Where the fence area is, it's not in the back. Okay. Question sure. to the petitioner Is that the corporate park going to maintain that? Yes. The association that we maintain. We just part of the maintenance. That's the attention basis for all of the firm. So everyone will have a share into that retention yes. basis. All of the seven units yep. are the association maintaining that area. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, let's open it to the public at 828 with a motion by Mr. Oliver. Yeah. Seconded by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. If anybody would like to speak on this item, now's the time. Come on up. Hi, my name is Gus Shabilia, and I reside at 17379 Rocco Drive. My house is directly in the middle bottom, almost where that line is, okay? And it is not a low visibility area. I can see the fences. I can see everything. And this gentleman was right about the 200 feet. I don't think we need to go a cheaper fence. That's it's all. It's a cost issue. I'd rather not look at a chain link fence. Uh, we're not even allowed chain link fences in our subdivision. Uh, there's a reason for that. The look is just terrible. I mean, we want. They're, they're trying to deviate. Because of cost, I mean, we they, they can wait. For, they can wait on another fence. Uh, I don't mind the wait, but I'm here to say that aesthetically, I don't think it looks good at all. Uh, we're not even allowed those in our subdivision, and we can see chain link fences. So yeah, it's not a low visibility area. I, in fact, it's called Elite Corporate Park. Park. Let's keep it elite. I don't think you need any chain chain link fences. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone? All right. Motion to close. Public hearing at 829. Make a motion. Support. Motion by Mr. Byerly. Supported by Mr. Tuckfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Okay. We have 
a motion or we have an item looking for a motion. I'd like to ask though. The... Could I? Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Trauma. Mr. Brock, can, can you just elaborate on that fence that it is, it, it does meet the requirements? That's up. And then I want to, I, I do want to know how close these houses are. So I think Mr. Van Tiflin just measured as we were sitting here. I don't know what. 300, roughly 350 feet. Okay. Condominium building. Uh, so they face the. They face the opposite way. That would be to their rear of their building. Yeah. So the condominiums don't face this fence. It's to the rear. They kind of corner them. It, yeah. Corner the fence. All right. All right. And go ahead. So your your question about uh, they meet the requirements. So the typical requirements are the aluminum fence that Mr. Garrick spoke about. Uh, that it sounds like he's having a hard time. Uh, getting a hold of and they're very costly. Uh, so the engineering standards allow for a deviation from that to a chain link fence. So what they're proposing does meet the requirements if the planning commission approves it. And as you read here, it's fences in areas of low public visibility may request approval of a commercial grade vinyl coated chain link fence. So I think that's your, your task is to determine is this an area of low public visibility? Thank you. Okay. Mr. Bennett, are there any other adjacent fences to either proposed or uh, uh, existing to this uh, current location, like to, um, uh, to enclose um, some industrial buildings um, or, or commercial buildings or properties? Adjacent to this is an existing facility. Um, is there plans in the in that at that location or in your future development of uh, the facility to uh, what would be here? Uh, so, if I could hear that, uh, Mr. Bentley, this area. Yeah. Sorry. This, this area here is where the detention basin would be. So the distance from this corner fence to the back of this, uh, Mr. Van Tiflin just measured roughly 350 feet. There are no other fences in the area right now associated with this development, but they don't have plans in for any of these units that will go back there. When unit six and unit seven are developed because they're industrial adjacent to residential, they will have a masonry wall separating them at that time. Correct, and there doesn't need to be a masonry fence then um, along uh, going going further north. Then no, the requirement for the masonry fence would be adjacent to residential, which at this time ends about right here. And there's no security fences or anything going to the north of the the proposed pond. Okay, this time no. All right, thank you. Chairman, if I could, the petitioner, uh, Mr. Garrick, um, uh, seems like you might have two difficulties that are prompting this time and, and money. Um, obviously, materials are difficult to get right now. I have some exposure with the building trades, and it's uh, definitely an interesting time for the, the building material process. Um, with that in mind, what's your thoughts about um, some other type of compromise here? Obviously, there are there, most of these areas to the west are probably going to be blocked by masonry wall, um, but you potentially have some exposure that would be greater than normal. Have you thought about potentially um, supplementing the fence on the east side with evergreens or anything of that nature? Is that something you've considered? Well, the landscape area within the fence, we don't want to put any landscaping in. The inside. Steep thing that's going to be tough enough to get mowers in and around. Then on the east, from that port all the way to the east, in the future, when that lot seven is developed, that is going to be another water means to put through that whole area. So anything on the outside of that fence, and again, and then hopefully we put the building lot seven access. So it's rather tight. We are 1,320 feet to the residents in the south. And 
does wants any of these buildings. And I would agree with you specifically to the parcel to the um, south. As you mentioned, it's a thousand feet or more. There's a masonry wall. However, if our standard is low visibility, if I apply that standard uh, directly, uh, obviously there will be some visibility from the houses to the east. That's why I'm asking. I'm asking the question. Um, the, the ordinance gives us this path, but it also gives us some standards. And if I was again, if I was just looking to the south or looking to the houses behind the masonry wall, I would say. That, we we are negating visibility, right. um, but that's my question. There, um, you expect that that um, that access to go through. I know when we've seen this parcel in the past, there seems to be some. Um, uh, uh, there seems low odds that 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 um, that uh, access would go through on the east side, or at least that's my memory from the last time we saw that. You you are expecting that to go through. Correct, but you mentioned an access might cause it. If I understood you correctly, you mentioned that an access might cause it to be a narrow, there be to be narrow room on the east side of the. Yeah. Okay. 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 Structure uh, for the element that is there because there's no other way to get there. So we're hoping to build a building there someday. You're, you're talking about the access to the south, then. The access, no, I'm talking about the access to the on there, the outlet, we would eliminate. You're not talking about any more roads, access to infrastructure. What is there is there. No, that is and, uh, and understood. I'm not trying to imply you are. My understanding just was from what you're saying. Are 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 you? You are not anticipating. What I'm asking is if you've considered putting landscaping to the east of the fence. My understanding was you said that would be difficult to do, but I'm not. I guess I'm not fully understanding your explanation because I'm I'm trying to say it back, and I must not be. So can you can you give a description on that again? Well, the area that is by the the east side of that street, the end of the court. From there, you can put in some trees, one around the top. But that area from that court all the way to east, that's all future development. That's a lot more infrastructure. So anything you plan on set is again that. Um, Mr. Box, and I guess my my concern here is if the standard is minimal visibility. Um, again, as I as I noted, I think there wouldn't be visibility from the south end. But again, if that's the standard, there could be visibility from the east end. Uh, there is residential over there. The wall would go to the edge of the property line, but you have an I guess an angular view. Um, it sounds like Mr. Garrick saying that landscaping, additional landscaping might be um, more doable once that uh, industrial plot is developed. Uh, do we have leeway to, to request that it's put in at such time as that parcel is developed? Obviously trying to strike a balance here, not, not looking to do something that's onerous um, and, um, and putting in landscaping that's gonna get driven over by earthwork machines isn't very practical. I guess I would defer that to, to Mr. Loya, whether they can put that condition of allowing uh, a vinyl coated chain link fence now with a condition that landscaping is installed at a later date to kind of block that view from uh, the area north of where the masonry wall would end. Well, I, I think the concern is what is going to go, go there in the future. You see a building is going to go there. So there may be requirements at that time. Well, there'll certainly be a masonry wall requirement because it's industrial, right. it's residential. So that, that wall may be continued. You're also going to have a building that's going to block a substantial, from what I see, a substantial portion of this pond. And just looking at Google Maps, I see that the adjacent residential subdivision has trees, berms, and a and a drain 
in the rear of it, which would actually screen it from this residential development, at least partially. So I'm not, I, I don't know that the board is taking that into consideration that they have, they have vegetation screening on their own residential development, which would provide potentially lower visibility. So, I mean, we have to take the development as a whole. Uh, we have to take into account that he's gonna have a building there adjacent to this pond, which is going to, uh, may affect visibility. You have to take into account the age that the residential development has screening to this development. So it seems to me that what Mr. Garrick is saying is it's impractical to put landscaping there. And I, I know that just listening to the, the planning department usually is we're not into impractical or temporary solutions. But Correct. Yeah. But I request a clarification uh, in the discussion. Are we talking, we're talking about views from this this residential area. This is a th over a thousand feet. Correct. We're talking there are going to be buildings in here. We're talking about views from so here to here. A masonry wall will eventually come in here because it's commercial to residential, correct? So it would stop here. It stop. would stop there, correct. And stop here. And for the fence, could we propose that the required fence be along that far east? Uh, portion, the, the shortest portion, 150, it's like 185 feet approximately, and uh, the rest be chain link. Um, and a bit of that, just Mr. Box, if I have a, if I could interject a question, possibly not off the top of your head, but do you know what the setback is for the? I'm not sure what the prop parcel number is, but the lower right. Industrial parcel, the setback to the north edge. I'm I'm going to stand up. It'll be easier if I just point to hang on. The setback from the building to this to that that would be considered a, a side yard. So I want I, I believe it's 25 feet, might be 35. Uh, so so the likelihood of a building being directly up to that 25 feet is probably very high. Very likely, yes. Um, and. I think Mr. Garrett pointed out that there's going to be some water mains in that area as well. So they're not going to want to put the building right on top of, of that. Or a, mm -hmm. I wasn't picturing the edge of the building that close. Um, I think that m covers more of my concern. My, my concern was the angular view from the houses, maybe a stretch, but with a building that far, the, the, uh, I would agree. The likelihood of being able to clearly see that is considerably lower. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Anyone else? Do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Oliver. Discussion on the fence. I move we approve the revised site plan for Leak Harper Park. Permanent parcel 0820100018. Okay. Motion by Mr. Oliver to approve. Support. Support by Mrs. Smith. Mr. Bentley, please call the roll. Mr. Oliver. Yes. Mrs. Smith. Yes. Mr. Bentley. Yes. Mr. Hardy. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield. Yes. Mr. Spatafora. Abstains. Oh, sorry. I was just... My early yes, yes. Yeah. Um, Mr. Marley. Yes. Okay. Right. Motion passes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Next item public comments on non agenda items. Once again, if you'd like to speak, you have four minutes. And I think everybody's leaving. That leaves you. Okay. One of these days you're going to come up. I know you are. All right. So it doesn't look like we have anybody that has any public comments on non agenda items. Well, Commissioner, he might. Or is it? Did you have anything you'd like to share? Okay. All right. All right. Um, comments. Anyone? 
Um, Mr. Chairman, I did have uh, one comment. Um, actually, I think I had two two things, one comment and one question. I'll go with a comment first, just with regards to the PUD. Um, you know, we had a PUD request today that uh, I guess varied from the original one. Um, I didn't have any concern with the specific PUD request. It's obvious that the um, adjacent landowners maintaining something and, and the existing landowner uh, is trying to do the logical thing to his property. But I've seen the uh, ability or the seeming ability to abuse a PUD more than a considerable number of other mechanisms that we we'll work with. And so I would just put out there a note of caution. Um, you know, I take the job seriously. We, we go through things. I, I have angry calls on my phone. Um, I, I signed up for the job. I'm not complaining about it. But when I get those calls, I tell them in good conscience, I looked at this plan and I did the best I could to make sure it was approved. And I've done that now over some eight years. And I have a number of different properties that said that. And I put my credibility on the line. And so it concerns me if we start getting into a pattern where we approve these things, we, we stand up for them, we, we tell people, no, trust us, we're trying to get the best thing. If we were to eventually get into a position where we vote based on one thing and then retract it later. And, you know, in, in this particular case, the, the, the parcel was given substantial, um, substantial uh, increase in uh, usage uh, in, in density, which is something we know is a, a concern of many residents of this township. If you were to pull most of the residents, they wouldn't ever want us to give high density. And we should, and we should do it smartly and intelligently and whatever else. Um, but I just think we should be really, really, really careful of rolling back things that were placed into a PUD that was agreed upon in the past. I think it, it cuts into the township's credibility. And I think it cuts into or could cut into the trust that we ask the residents to put in us. So, um, and, you know, obviously the petitioner was here tonight. Uh, he's got a large presence in the township, does a good job. Um, I haven't always agreed with his developments, um, but I, I do trust he will do a good job. And I, I do appreciate him being here. So I, I know that voting against thing isn't always positive, but that's my concern. And, and I think we should be really cautious of that going forward. So. That's one item. The second item, Mr. Box, was with regards to um, maybe not a specific business tonight because it's never generally great practice to bring up, but with regards to our outdoor um, seating, uh, temporary seating, we've looked over that as an ordinance, I think, when it was solidified. Is there a mechanism in there for those to be reapproved on a yearly basis? Like, what, what's the what's the process if if someone is um, using the benefits uh, to their neighbor's detriment. So the outdoor business is submitted on a yearly basis. So they, they resubmit. Uh, the one in particular this evening, um, I, I believe changed their, their site plan. I could be wrong about that. So that that's not necessarily considered the outdoor business, but uh, the ones that, that are exercising outdoor businesses, some of the restaurants that have outdoor tables and patios, um, those are submitted on a yearly basis. So yes, if, if it goes poorly one year, uh, we do have that discretion to, to not allow it the following year. Did we approve that as more than, did we approve that as a site plan adjustment? The, the, the one that was in question in the rear year? I believe so, yes. And now that you're saying that we looked at that. I believe so. Um, and I will also say that um, they were the one in, in discussion this evening. I know that there was some noise issues in the past before I was at the township. Uh, and when I first started here, there was big concern um, about that. Clearly people showed up tonight with a lot of concern with noise. Um, however, I will also say that they, I got lots of phone calls a couple of years ago about that place. And once they installed the Arborvites and, and built their outdoor facilities, I have not received a single call to complain about the noise, and I don't believe our code enforcement has either. So the fact that they're here tonight talking about a lot of noise coming from that, I don't know if if that's just a fear that there's going to be more noise with this new potential development, or if, if they've just grown tired of calling the police or, or code enforcement. Um, 
but they they have not called in recent time. My experience, well, it's not as front lines as yours, is that when people are upset, they call, even if they've called. So that's that's good good feedback to know. So very good. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Okay. Anyone else? Commissioners. Anyone else? All right. Let's move on to the Macomb Township Board of Trustees liaison, Mr. Charles Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make this quick. <laughs> uh, the township, uh, a lot of focus on hiring new people. We've hired fire inspector, election supervisor. We've even filled a vacancy on the um, library board. Uh, Park and Rec's got some real nice uh, um, umbrellas at uh, Waldenburg Park, so that'll be nice. Um, if he had Eagle Scout that come in, uh, his name was Carter Sturry, and we had uh, gave him a resolution, and um, that's about it. Mainly a lot of hires, but I do want to uh, mention one thing tonight that didn't happen at the board meeting, but it happened right here tonight. Um, and I guess I could compliment the hard work of engineering and and planning. Uh, when when that developer that we just had made the compliment of our new system working good, uh, that really speaks volumes to how hard everyone's worked to to make it work good for these. Because it was always uh, I I'd always hear comments on the street when. People felt they could talk freely on how slow we were and how cumbersome we were. And uh, sometimes it was hard to defend, but that really speaks volumes to me. So thank you. And that's it. Okay. No questions. It's too late. <laughs> ZBA liaison update. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would mention that we have a special meeting on Thursday. So Mr. Fox and I and possibly Mr. Loya and Mr. Piper will be back here in a few days. Um, and uh, I think beyond that, um, really nothing further. We have a we have a couple items that might make sense to bring back to the ZBA, but I'm not ready to speak on them at the moment. Just that as typical, we see things at the ZBA and uh, particularly the special meeting Thursday might result in something um, pertaining to solar panels that the Planning Commission might want to look at um, at some point in the future. That's all I have. Okay. Any department items? Nothing special to report. Uh, I, I believe there will be a meeting in two weeks, so I think we, we do have some items for that. Okay. I have nothing to report. And I'll go ahead and make the motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Motion. Supported by Mrs. Smith. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Some sweet mugs, John. Party that was a very long sweet mug. Every job. You know what? You, <laughs> you can't come here anymore unless you're here. <laughs>